Alright, this video is an update to an old one that I've done. The video that I'm replacing here is a couple of years old and this was because of some comments and requests from viewers on my YouTube channel which is youtube.com forward slash graphicsg grfxg and this video was how you set up using GitHub with Xcode but as you can see this was back in 2017 and there's been a lot of changes since then so it's time to go back revisit this and fulfill those requests from viewers so thank you very much for that if you have a request or a comment you can either add them to directly to these videos or you can go over to peterwidham.com forward slash contact and put your suggestions or comments in the form there and I will always read them all so thank you so there's been a lot of changes to Xcode and GitHub integration and in fact source control in general in Xcode now that we have Xcode 11 so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to try and cover the entire process from the beginning to end there's a couple of assumptions we are going to make here and the first one will be that you actually do have a GitHub account so you know we're going to take that into account that you've also got Xcode installed and you have of course your Apple ID account set up in Xcode as well so with that let's go ahead and get started okay so let's do the first step here now I've already got my account set up here under source control accounts in Xcode but we're going to go ahead and show you how they set them up so in Xcode open up your preferences and then once you see that you may or may not have some items listed in here you go down to the plus and you can select from all these different ones so it's not just github you've got gitlab in there and bitbucket as well but you would select github and hit continue in here you would put your account name on github and you would put a password in but more than likely actually what you will end up doing is putting in your personal access token and then you hit sign in and then once you've done that you're going to get presented with the screen here that hopefully is going to show you that everything is set up now in my case I'm using SSH keys so you know I've got a key set up on my machine um, that's a separate thing from this video but um, I would assume that you're either familiar with that or creating one of those is very simple uh, you should be able to find the answer on Google in about two minutes so once that's done I've got my github set up in here under source control accounts in Xcode but let's talk about that personal access token for a second so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close the preferences here and let's go over to GitHub. So here's my, my profile here, right? Under my profile, if I click and I can go down to the settings, and under settings, there is, you're gonna see there's developer settings. And if you click on there, you're gonna see there's this list for GitHub apps, OAuth, uh, apps, and personal access tokens. So you click on personal access tokens, either way, you're gonna hit generate new token. And when you do that, you're gonna give it a name, give it something meaningful, and then you will go through and select the access privileges that you want to give it here. Um, there are some things to cover in here, but uh, depending on how you set things up and you know who you're sharing code with and things like that, you may change these options. But at the end of it, you're going to hit generate token. And when you do that, it's going to give you the string um, of the token ID, which is the one that you put in that field in Xcode. So hopefully that makes sense. It's very straightforward. Um, you know it looks like way more daunting than it actually is okay now let's go back to my profile here for a second and now what we're going to do is we've got everything set up and we've got github set up in Xcode so the first thing I'm going to cover is what if you've already got a repo on github that you've set up or you know maybe you're part of a team and there's one and how do you get that in Xcode so that's what we're going to cover here so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, repo that I have here, this Swift UI pick of you as UI text field entry, which funnily enough is a very popular one on the website. But I'm just going to click on the repo there to see the repo contents. And as you can see, you know, we've, we're seeing the standard GitHub list here. And what I can do is if I click on this clone or download, you know, you'll have seen this before. I can either take this URL and put that into Xcode or some app but there's also this new button here right this open in Xcode so what it actually does is it actually saves you a lot of the trouble now and a lot of the configuration so I've currently got Xcode open and all I'm gonna do is I don't have a project open because as you saw we just closed the preferences so I'm just gonna say open in Xcode and you know I'm on Safari here and it says do you want to allow this page to open Xcode yes I do so go ahead and allow it when I do that it's going to come up here and it's going to say well where do you want to save this so 
I'm just going to say, okay, I'm just going to save it under my documents folder. It's going to give it a folder name, which is the same as the repo. And I'm just going to say, go ahead and clone. And when I do that, you're going to see what happens here. Now, this is an old repo, so that's why we get this warning. It's got nothing to do with the GitHub setup here. I'm just going to go OK. And what it's actually done is it's cloned down that repo to my machine and it's opened it up in Xcode. So how easy was that? We've now got a cloned repo and it's linked back to the one on GitHub. So with that, let's move forward. Let's do something else here. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm just going to click on this one here, which is the show the source control navigator. And as you can see, this is the repo that we just pulled down. Here are all the branches. There's just the master branch right on this one. Now, just to show that this is fully working and everything is what we expect, what I can do is if I just change something here, I'm just going to pick one of these. Um, let's just delete some comments. Um, I'll probably regret this later on if I ever come back to this repo, but I'm just going to do that and save it. And as I save it and go back over to source control, you can see, sorry, let me click on there and then I got to get this right. Click on there and go down here and click on this to say, just show me the files that have been modified in the repo. There's one of them. I click on that one in Xcode. Uh, it's the one that I've got open here, obviously, you know, it's part of this project, but what you can see is it's live, right? So it's ready for me to make this commit and send it back to GitHub. So like I say, I think it's safe for me to do this for demonstration purposes. I've just removed the, the comment here. So I'm just going to use the source control menu and I'm going to go source control and commit. And when I do that, it's going to show me that sure enough, here's the file I changed. Here's the content that I changed, right? You saw me remove that comment, but it's all linked up to the GitHub repo. So I'm just going to put a comment here, removed the comment from source code, just so I can show you. And at the same time, I can either save it and then push it, but uh, since this is my own repo and I know it's only me using it, I'm going to say, go ahead and push it to the remote at the same time. And I'm going to have it push it to the same branch that I'm on. And I'm just going to say, commit one file and push. It's hopefully going to go through and do that. It's pushing it now or trying to. There we go. So now when I go back over here, let's go back to here. And if I now reload the web page, you should see uh, 16 seconds ago, I updated the files. So if I go across and I show you the commits, here it is, right? That is the commit we just made in Xcode. So all I had to do was hit that button that said, open in Xcode, it pulled the repo down, hooked it back up to the remote repository on GitHub for me, and it's here for me to make commits and everything else that I would normally do under source control, which I think you can you know, argue is significantly easier than the earlier versions of Xcode. So that's how we do that. Now there's something else here I think we should cover, which is, you know, what if I want to create a new project and I don't have the repo on GitHub already? Because obviously that's going to happen with every new app that you create or framework or whatever you're working on. So let's go ahead and cover that as well. So, so that we can do that and I can show you everything here. Let's go back to my profile there. Okay, with the repositories. And currently you can see I got 25, right? Um, I've got a whole bunch, probably nowhere near as many as many other people, but I just want to bring this page up here. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new project in Xcode. I'm just gonna bring up Xcode, say create new project. Doesn't really matter what it is for this example here. I'm just gonna say next, and I'm just gonna say GitHub example. I'm just gonna leave the rest of the details. Like I say, it doesn't matter. None of this is important for what we're doing here. Okay, this is the important part, right? So I'm gonna save it, this project on my desktop, but see this here, source control, I'm gonna create a Git repository on my Mac. Um, you can do this later on, not a big deal. You can go ahead and do it later on, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna, the, the part later on is the same. So I'm just gonna say create Git repository at the same time, and I'm gonna hit create. Okay, so here's my project. It's not going to do anything exciting because it's just a, an empty project for now. It is well, the build succeeded. We expected that to happen. But the important part that we care about is the source control, right? So if I go over to source control, at the moment, I only have, the, there are no remotes, right? I, I haven't set that up yet. I've only got my local one. Now, what I can do 
is if I go over to source control and I say push, well, the first thing it's going to tell me is, hey, you don't actually have a remote to push it to. Yep, okay, great. So we're going to fix that problem. And the way we do that, I'm just going to move this up here. All right, here we go. And I'm just going to click on this little icon down here. Again, I'm on the source control tab, right? I'm just going to click here and I'm going to say, let me see if I can get it on the screen. Let me move that up there. And I'm just going to say down here, create GitHub example remote. Okay. I'm not going to add the existing uh, remote because there isn't one. So I'm going to say create GitHub example remote. Let me bring the window back down here. It's going to say, okay, which account do you want to use? I want to use my GitHub account. I give it a name. It's by default, it's going to pick the same name as the project here, but I'm just going to leave it at that. And I'm just going to put in, this is the description. All right. Realistically, please, everybody put in good readme files on your GitHub repos. Everybody will appreciate it. Um, this one's just for the video, so no one's going to care. Uh, visibility, you can set it to public or private. I'm just going to leave it public. The remote name, I'm going to leave as origin, and I'm just going to hit create. So it's created it on GitHub and it's now pushing it up to GitHub. Right, fantastic, there it is. Look, you can see it there, right? And there's our initial commit, which it created for us. Let's go back over to GitHub on the web here. And if I just refresh this page, you're gonna see that, look, and now I got 26 repositories, right? So let's click on here. Let's find the one that I'm looking for, GitHub example. There it is, I just created that one. Fantastic, we'll click on there. Here it is, initial commit. So this is, our, I didn't have to do anything in GitHub here. Xcode uh, took care of it all for me when it was talking to GitHub and set it all up. That is the easiest way to set up a remote repository for your project in Xcode. Uh, you can do it the other way, of course. You can set it up on GitHub first and then pull it down, you know, like we did it the first time around. It's no problem. But either way, that is how you use the basics of working with GitHub in Xcode 11. Um, again, thank you everybody for requesting this updated video. I hope it's been helpful. If it has been helpful, hey, go ahead and hit that like, right? Share it with friends, tell everybody about it, leave a comment. I'd love to hear that it's been helpful. Uh, along with any requests or suggestions, it was your requests that made this new video happen. So, you know, please go ahead. You are being listened to. And with that, I appreciate it. Speak to you soon. Bye.